Hi, my name is Tuche. I'm an evolutionary biologist and a lecturer in Columbia University. In this presentation today, I will walk you through the adjustments I made with my colleagues to teach the virus evolution online and also phylogenomic trees. I teach a core course that is called Frontiers of Science in Columbia University. All first year students take this course before deciding on their majors. As you can imagine, we have a lot of students, more than 500 students per semester. So therefore, there are around 15 instructors who teach this very same course. We teach about scientific habits of mind, which are the basics of probability and statistics, how to read a graph in a scientific article, how to design experiments, how to come up with a hypothesis and how to test that hypothesis, and how to read articles in general. As content, we use cutting edge research. This can be astrophysics, human evolution, climate change, brain research, genomics, or gene therapy approaches. And we highly value active learning strategies. Every week, we introduce another activity in the classroom to teach about the content. We let our students do semester projects throughout the semester and discuss with their peers, present them, and we take them to the museum's natural history museum. But as you can imagine, this semester, all of these were quite challenging. So let's go back to January when everything began in uh, Frontiers of Science. This is the first day of the course where our director Ivana is introducing us, my fellow instructors, you can see in the first picture, to the students for the first time. And we are all gathered in this large hall together. So this is January. And when you fast forward to March, this is us. So um, this is from the millions of Zoom meetings we had while we were turning in to online teaching. How to do it synchronously, asynchronously, how to create stuff that could be talked remotely and especially how to adapt our activities that could be Zoom friendly. Right after the breakdown started, sorry, but the lockdown started, the first unit was biodiversity. And we decided conveniently to teach about virus evolution and phylogenomics. So you see here my fellow colleagues in the same unit. We prepared um, the course content, some of them from scratch, some of them we adapted to include more about virus evolution and phylogenomic trees. And we also created an activity that is Zoom friendly. First, our lecturer, Professor Dustin Rubenstein, gave a lecture for all the students, uh, where really like almost 500 students uh, joined that day, uh, where he talked about virus evolution, uh, what is the natural selection plays in it, and how we can use genomic tools to study and prevent disease. Then later in the week, uh, we walked our students in our smaller classrooms, in the Zoom of course, um, about the evolution in general, natural selection, um, virus evolution, and then more specifically about COVID-19 pandemic. Then we wanted our students to turn to navigate to a website called NextTrain. This is a real-time tracking database of pathogen evolution. It is open source. It is very cool. If you did not check it yet, please do so. So we wanted our students to go to that website in groups of four or five students in Zoom breakout rooms. And we gave them this Google shared document, which is the activity, web, um, activity worksheet. And they worked on this worksheet together by following the questions. And as they discuss about the answers of those questions, they came up, uh, they understood how phylogenetic trees are created, what does a node mean? What does a branch mean? And when, when does branching happen? Why are certain branches longer than the others? And then we asked them more specific questions such as, in which country do you think you see most of the mutations accumulated? Why this can be? Or which continents have not accumulated so many mutations so far? And why do you think that can be? Then 
um, we also wanted them to focus on certain regions or certain uh, countries that are there in their interest um, so that they could relate more to what they were studying. So we were not giving them the answers of those questions in the beginning so that they could actually explore and learn together an active learning experience. We also asked them to study other types of pathogens and calculate um, their substitution rates and compare to that of the coronavirus. And this way, they actually realized how fast um, or slow the coronavirus is mutating. Then, when they all came out from the rooms, we, I wanted them to discuss about, okay, are all mutations beneficial? What do you think? What do you think about virus evolution? Why is it important? What is it important about the disease spread and especially vaccine development? Then we discussed about vaccine development strategies and all the phases that are involved in it. And I can tell you, students were very much enthusiastic about learning all about these. And then the scientific parts of it came very easily because they were like sponges. They really wanted to learn. And what they were most um, excited was, for example, oh, the virus did not necessarily come to the US from China, so we cannot really call it Chinese virus. Or, oh, most mutations are not actually uh, beneficial or harmful for the body. That's interesting. And they were definitely very interested in learning about uh, vaccine development and why it takes such long times. So overall, um, whether it's in person or in Zoom, it's possible to apply active learning strategies and it should be our goal to do it, right? So um, with this, I would like to thank my colleagues in Frontiers of Science. These are the beautiful messages we shared with our students upon completion of the course. And I also would like to thank you for listening. I would be very happy to discuss further. I also have a live talk during the conference on Monday. So please check that out as well. Thank you very much.